Hi guys and welcome back to Dream Queen. Um, Perla here. So if you have any questions as to what it is that I do, how I do it, um, I call it Perla's gift. Um, it's a generational gift. If you have any questions how I get the songs, etc, etc, how <laughs> type of services that I provide and things like that. All of that information is going to be down below in the description. So we're going to get started with um, Gemini. Um, <sighs> I really feel like I'm going to have like a panic attack right now. <laughs> Whew, take a breather. So the song that came through for you guys was um, Silent Scream by Anna Blue. And the verse that spoke to me the most was, and the storm is rising inside of me. And it's like, I'll repeat it again. This video can be if you're a Gemini or if your person is a Gemini. It um, doesn't really matter. It's just the energies um, that I'm sensing from the Geminis or people that are very close to them. And it's more of a... Oh, God. Tired of being put in this box. Tired of living um, to other people's expectations of you tired of just being someone who you truly aren't um in one part or all aspects of your life so what is coming in very strong is some of you have already um stepped out some of you have already <sighs> taken that um that leap of faith of just being who you truly are and others of you are still in that um in that energy of wanting to knowing that you have to just trying to figure out how to how to show the world who you truly are because you're just tired of being pictured as this um this little perfect person whether you're a female or male and you're tired of feeling like you're letting people down when in an essence the only person that you should really be worried about letting down is yourself and that's a person that you have been letting down constantly over and over and over again because you're living to what other people want you to do to what other people want you to feel to how other people want you to act and things like that so it's like you guys are finally um breaking out of that and i really do feel that it has a lot to do with everything that has come forth um whether the karma that you reaped recently was good or bad regardless of what it was um or the karma that you saw other people reaping um what you saw manifesting in other people's life based on the actions that they had taken in the past um is giving you that push forward to just be you without any question about it that makes any sense hmm. like i said there are there's still a small group of you that are still trying to get out of that trying to um to stop living in um other people's shadows i guess because i feel that people want to keep you in the shadows and i don't mean just like um, romantic relationship people want the people that you surround yourself with want you to to be the best you you can be as long as you're not overshining them as long as you're not overpowering them as long as you're not overcoming them as long as you're not more successful than they are they're okay with it they're happy with it but the minute that you step out and your success, your shine, your glow, your you um, overtakes whatever it is that you're surrounded by or by the people that you're surrounded, um, they don't like that. And it's like you're finally understanding that you living in your fullest potential and, potential and you being who you truly are shouldn't affect how other people lives go in an essence as far as their success or as far as their their own self-esteem because that is a power that they themselves hold as well as you do so i can't base my success or my 
how can I put it? Yeah, like my success um, based on what people that I collectively um, engage with. Um, what was I trying to say? See, now I'm all confused because I feel like that's what it is. It's like you guys are just, and some of you are still in this energy like, well, if I do this and I blow up, you know, if you're in a workplace and your your supervisor is great and everything and you know they have great ideas they have great things but let's say there's another positioning opening up higher than your supervisor right and your supervisor is putting in for this position and a colleague comes over and tells you oh my god you really should apply for that position because i think that you would do great in it and it's like you're sitting here like wondering but if I go and I get it, how is my supervisor going to feel? Because they have been my mentor for so many years. I have worked under them for so many years. How are they going to feel if they end up working underneath me? And it's like, that's not the question here, sweetie. The question here is, why are you limiting yourself based on what other people are going to think? Or how other people are going to feel? If something and if an opportunity comes up for you to um, grow to advance in whatever it is I'm not saying to be cold like you know cutthroat towards people and things like that but if the opportunity is there and it's being open to everyone that includes you regardless of whether your mentor is the person that you're gonna come head to head with if it makes you feel better letting them know hey I know that you're applying for this position, but I really feel that um, I will be good at it. So I'm just, you know, giving you an FYI that I am going to be applying out of courtesy. If you feel that you have to do that, then you go ahead and do that. But you have to understand that sometimes opportunities come and knock on the door and we have to take it because if we don't, then we're always going to be wondering what if. And I feel that that is something that some of you are really struggling with. Like, do I take this opportunity? Do I jump completely in? And it doesn't have to be work-related, but what I'm saying is, um, I'm just using that as an example because I feel like um, that is something most people will be able to um, understand if I put it that way, because that is the energy. And in essence, it's like, there's something that you want to do. There's something that you want to go forth towards, but... What's holding you back is not wanting to outshine other people, is not wanting to um, leave other people behind. And you have to understand, if you're in this energy where the opportunity is being presented to you and you get it and that person doesn't get it, it is because it was meant for you, not for that person. There it goes. You're so afraid of what what people are going to say, how you're going to be perceived. Um, it's kind of like you're thinking, oh my God, they're just going to think that I, um, like you're intentionally trying to hurt somebody or sabotage somebody. And it's not even like that because you're not even coming from, from that space. And like I said, I feel like I'm having, like, I literally, all I want to do is grab, like, a brown paper bag and just start breathing because I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack right now because this is how much you guys are giving a thought and thought and thought and thought and thought. And it's like, you know what? If an opportunity for love, if an opportunity for a new job, if an opportunity for a new um, position in your current job or whatever it is, a business venture, whatever it is that is coming, that is presenting itself, it's literally, like, on your door, like... I'm here. Are you going to take me? Um, don't think twice about it. Um, another thing that is coming through, maybe you have a group of friends or you have um, close family members that are the same sex as you are and have had failed relationships um, and have, haven't overcome that. And let's say you have overcome your heartbreaks, you have overcome your failures, you have overcome everything that um, has happened to you in the past. And now let's say love is walking into you, into you and you are afraid to take it because you're going to feel bad for your family members or your friends that are not in a relationship. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, but how do... Do they? Do you honestly think that they think twice when a uh, love interest shows up in their life? Do you think that they're sitting there thinking, "Oh my God, is she gonna be sad because I'm in a relationship and I'm not"? 
No, they're not thinking like that. They're like, oh my God, I got butterflies in my stomach. Oh my God, he is so awesome. Oh my God, she's so gorgeous. Um, like that is where they're at. And that's where you should be at as well. You're, you're supposed to enjoy these opportunities. You're supposed to enjoy love. You're supposed to enjoy, you know, work. You're supposed to enjoy your career. You're supposed to just enjoy life. And when we're so focused on what other people are going to say or think about what we're doing, we're not enjoying it. All we're constantly doing is constantly trying to process a way not to hurt other people. But in an essence, we're hurting ourselves. And what do you rather? Do you rather hurt yourself because that's the only person that you really have control over emotions or allow other people to feel hurt. You know what? If they feel hurt because you are in a loving relationship, if they feel hurt because you got a better position or they feel hurt because you finally started your business or if they feel hurt because you got a higher position than they are and now instead of them being your boss, you're their boss, then that has nothing to do with you. That is inner work that they themselves have to do within themselves and in an essence has nothing to do with you and that's one thing that i really 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 want to stress because like i said in the last reading that i did for gemini the only reason why i know this is because for some reason that video i guess a lot of people do like the whole karma thing even though it wasn't to imply for you to celebrate other people's karma it was to for you to stay humble while other people are getting their karma especially like their bad karma and stuff like that but i feel that everybody that is coming out of that energy where they have seen the shift of the karma that they have themselves have gone through the karma you need to um understand that as things shift and you're reaping in your good karma. You're reaping in everything that you have put out to the universe, everything that you have put out to God, everything that you have prayed about. Then now is when everything starts to bloom, is when everything starts to grow. Yes, we're going into winter, but that does not mean anything. You can still grow a garden inside. You can have a greenhouse and grow a garden. So in an essence, there's really no specific time when your seed has to bloom. It is more of... Are you going to nurture that flower when it finally grows? Or are you just going to let it die because it's cold outside and you don't want to put the work in that it takes to, you know, keep up with the greenhouse? So it's it's more of that, like, you know, these are the things that you asked for. These are the things that you have been praying for. These are the things that you have been trying to manifest. And now that they're here, all you're worrying about is about another person. How they're going to feel, how, how they're going to take it, how they're going to view you. Who gives a damn? Who does? Nobody. You shouldn't. You should. And this is the thing. People think that when it comes to this whole twin flame journey or whatever it is, that we are supposed to just be completely um, good. And I say that with quotations because it, it, is, it is a false reality. If we are, in an essence, good at all times, we will never take risk. We will never um, advance. And we will never set boundaries with certain people. And we will always um, consider <laughs> our actions to be a pure reflection um, on what is going on in other people's life. And that's kind of like... Okay, I'm not saying to just go out there and just be mean to people. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that our bad side, quotations again, is what allows us to set boundaries, is what allows us to see things from a different perspective, to see things from, and yes, yeah, sometimes you do have to be selfish because sometimes when you are not selfish, opportunities that are coming towards you you miss because you're so consumed on wanting to be <laughs> on wanting to be good on what society calls to be good and you know to follow the rules and this is how we do things and you know you shouldn't go above this person no that's bull my love if something is there for you it is there for you if it's something is pushing you to move forward in a certain direction is for a reason 
And this is where the balancing comes in. And this is where you have to understand if you are not physically harming another person, if you are not intentionally doing something to hurt another person, then there is nothing wrong with following your dreams. There's nothing wrong with following your heart. And that's just the truth. And this is what I feel that you guys are kind of stuck in because some of you are thinking, well, this person got all of this bad karma and look how they were. Okay. They could have been, they could have done the same thing that you did. Let's say they went ahead for a position that had them be their boss's boss. But you don't know the intention behind that person's action. You don't know the emotions that were attached. Maybe that person, the only reason why they wanted that position was because they wanted to humiliate another person, was because they wanted to prove that they were better than everybody else. And if your intentions are not coming from the same place, your intention, let's say, the position that you're applying for is coming more from a place that I honestly think that I can do good. I honestly feel that I can make changes in other people's lives or I can make changes within this company or I can make changes, whatever it is. Do you see? God, you both did the same exact thing or are doing the same exact thing, but the intention, the emotions behind it are different. So the karma that this person is reaping is obviously going to be the same as an envious one, as a, you know, I'm going to prove you wrong, I'm going to humiliate you and blah, 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 blah. So that's the karma that's coming back for them. But if your emotions, what is driving you to the action is pure love and compassion for other and wanting to truly help from your heart, then that is what you're going to reap. And that is what people need to get to a point to, of understanding because yes, 20 people can have the same, can do the same action or can have the same action, whatever you want to call it. But not everybody has the same intentions behind their actions. So if that is what you have to focus on so that you're not afraid of the opportunities that are going to present themselves to you, then that is what you need to focus on. What are my true intentions? What are my true emotions? Why is it that I want this so badly? Why is it that I feel that this is what I have to do? And just be honest with yourself and you yourself within you is going to lead you to what it is that you need to do. But let's just leave that energy of worrying so much about other people, what they're going to say and what they're going to think behind because it's not doing anything for you. Okay. Um, as far as when it comes to your connection with, um, with your person, it's like you both are here. So everybody's kind of like in their own little world, but <laughs> physically, I know these hand thingies today. I don't know what, um, and then your souls are like here, like together not pray i mean like together like connect me um i feel like a lot of telepathic um communication is going through um i'm not exactly sure that both of you are aware i feel that one is aware of it more than the other but it's like you guys are working out at a soul level um <laughs> how it is that things are going to move forward from where they are right now and it's actually quite um beautiful i feel like someone is awake should it be? It's like almost three in the morning. Anyways. Yeah, someone's awake. Anyways. Um, and I didn't close the door. And it's like, so, so it's actually quite beautiful because it's like once that negotiation between the two souls are, is completed, then whomever you guys decide in that telepathic communication that is going to move forward, um, and towards the other person, um, movement is going to start, um, as far as reconnecting, um, reigniting, <laughs> reigniting the fire that once was, but 
again, I keep on getting drawn back to the whole opportunity thing because I feel that for a lot of you, this is um, a second chance with somebody from your past. Um, this is somebody that you have had um, a long history with, um, painful history with mainly that's what i want to say more than long it has been long for most of you but for some of you it's more painful than long and you have to understand both of you have grown in different ways that would not had <clears throat> excuse me that would have not been possible if you guys would have stayed together because you guys will have limit your growth because neither of you will be able to, will have been able to do the work to become your true self because there was going to be a certain way that you were expected to um, behave or a certain way that you were expected to act. And sometimes it does take losing a person to really appreciate who they truly are and that goes both ways. So it's not about, you know, a lot of, especially us women, I'm not gonna lie, um, we love to blame everything on the guys. Oh, he cheated. Oh, he he was messaging so-and-so. He was talking to so-and-so. Oh, he's always with his friends. He, 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 he. All right, <laughs> this is what I say, like, when people call me, like, I have friends, you know, I do. <laughs> Very few um, handful of friends. Um, they're scattered throughout the USA. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them are not. I don't even think any of them are in our hometown anymore. Anyways, they're scattered throughout the, yeah, I think I have like one or two in our hometown. Or close enough. They're scattered. So when they call me, and I mean, I go years without speaking to some of my friends, like years. And we can pick up the phone and like, it'll start with like a text and next thing you know, we're on the phone for like hours and it's like, we've never stopped talking. And they'll go like, oh yeah, he, and I'm like, and I'll listen, I'm like, really? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, why would he? And I hit them with that. So what's the other half of the story? Or what do you mean? Well, if I was to speak to him, what would he tell me? Because there's always three sides. There's her side, his side, and then the truth. So that is one thing that we, as women, we have to admit. When, and I am not, mm -mm. I am not making excuses for guys who cheat, for guys who step out, for guys that this, for guys that that. I'm not making an excuse for that. But what I am saying is, where, what part in the relationship that we as females failed? Me bickering and arguing and things like that should not be an excuse for a guy to go ahead and cheat. But it is something that can cause a connection to start breaking. It is something that can start the self can start eating out of another person's self-esteem. It starts to cause a drift. So as females, sometimes we love to bicker. Um, we call it constructive um, criticism half the time. But sometimes we are hard to let go of things. Sometimes we want to hold the grudge. Sometimes we want to save something off our sleeve so that we can pull it out later. Sometimes when we reconnect with somebody from our past, we, when they do something that we don't like, we like to bring that up. So there you see a pattern. So if you, intend, if you choose to be with somebody from your past and you choose to forgive the person and you choose to move on, then you have to understand that day, that date. So let's say it is October 13th. So today, October 13th, I decide I'm going to start fresh with my ex. Let's say somebody that I dated back in middle school. And we're going to start fresh. And, you know, when we broke up, we broke up because he went ahead and he dated my best friend. That's it. Okay. That was like how many years ago? How many years have you been out of middle school? Seriously. Um, 
if you bring that into the new, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to repeat itself. So you have to have dealt with everything that happened before. You have to have healed that, like really healed it. Like, you know, whether you want to cry, sing, dance, laugh it off, work it out, whatever it is that, you know, your soul is asking you to do to work that out and release that, then you have to have done that so that now you can start fresh and you can start from the point of where you are now because it's the same people you were back in middle school is not the same people that you guys are now. I'm assuming not. I'm assuming that you have learned your lessons and so have they. So then we have to look at the relationship from this point forward. Now, if you cannot do that, then that means that there's still work inside of you that needs to be done. Or if they cannot do that, that means that there's still work inside of you that needs to be done. So again, we have to look at everything as a big picture. So for those of you that are probably like, Ugh, I really don't want to deal with anybody from my past. I'm not saying that everybody is going to deal with, with somebody from their past. But some people, your significant other, your DM or your DF is someone from your past. And it is someone that caused you pain. And when they come back around, you have to be ready emotionally and mentally if you decide that that's the path that you want to go down. Because I'm not here to tell you exactly what you're supposed to do. I am only here to let you know what I see, what I feel that is coming towards you. And hopefully give you advice into how um when certain things come up how to handle them or what to think of so that you can go within yourself to show you how to handle things so you know you guys are ready to just come out break out of your box um a lot of you have already came out of, come out of your box and stuff like that but just know that in any conflict with any person, whether it's a love interest, work related, or whatever it is, there's always going to be one person, the second person, and then the actual truth. And the truth, unfortunately, we can get as close to it as, as possible when we're revisiting the past, but we're not in that actual moment. So it's never truly going to be known. The only thing that is that is truly ever known from any situation that occurred in the past is the way one person, one in person, two perceive things and the way it made them feel. So the only thing that you guys can do in a point is share your your um your perception on what happened and how it made you feel, and then when similar situations arise with certain things, then you have an understanding on how your words and your actions can affect the other person and maybe just trying to clarify things a little bit more if arguments or things like that do arise so i'm going to pull out one of the angels and ancestors um oracle card these are the ones by kyle gray oh, i got it upside down and um i know i keep forgetting to um show them I'm trying. I'm trying here, people. Come on. Come here. Cut, come here, break. You know what? We'll do what I always do. Blame it on the narcolepsy. Uh, my baby girl sleeping. My doggy. I don't know where my guy is. My little buster. He's not that old. He's like 70, 75 pounds. Anyways, um, no, I'm not done. Um, yeah, I can't shuffle, so can you just imagine wearing gloves? Like It's like 10 times harder. Anyways, um, we are going to pull a car to, to see what you should be focusing your um, energy on. I get fixated like on one, on one car. This came up for somebody or in one of the other readings. Um, drew it. Hold. Hold the space. To me, that is, and I'm going to give you my interpretation of it before, because I am going to read the quick message for it anyways. Um, hold the space. I keep on wanting to say like, hold your space, but it's hold the space. And I think it has a lot to do with the 
the knowing of when an opportunity comes not to let it slip away from your hands not not to let it pass you by because if you do and I feel like it's not going to take long. It's like if you allow whatever opportunity is trying to um, come into your life at the moment, if you allow it to just um, pass you by, I feel that very soon after you're going to be regretting it. Let's see what the message has to say. Hold things together. Don't make any sudden moves or changes. Stand strong knowing you are where you are supposed to be. <laughs> That's a short message. No, I'm not reading the extended message. Okay, so you're going to be like, well, if they don't want us to make um, sudden movements. The opportunities that are coming towards you may seem sudden in a physical sense. But like I said, these are things, whether in love, career, whatever it is, that you have been praying, asking for, um, trying to manifest. So when they present themselves, it may seem suddenly presenting themselves, but look, take a look back at all the time that you spend trying to manifest, all the time that you spend praying for this, and all the time that you spent um wishing and hoping for and asking for it. Um, so in an essence, it wasn't as suddenly as you think it came through. What I feel that you shouldn't be so sudden about is about dismissing the opportunity just because of the simple fact that someone else may be offended or feel some type of way because of it. Um, I don't know why, but this picture has been staring at me the entire time. Um, just read the shirt. Find your strong. But if you look at it, find, see that in you. Find in you your strong. Find your strong. But that's only going to come from finding it within you. Yeah, those are the type of shirts that I wear when I work out. <laughs> Um, oh my workout. I used to be very heavy um, into workouts when I was um, working. Um, just kind of like started my day and allow me to kind of like keep my space. So I'm going to get back into that. But one of the things that I always made sure was um, for every workout, I would wear um, loud, try to wear loud pants and a lot of shirts with like motivational saying in it. And I do not go to the gym. Um, I would work out at home. Um, I followed um, a home program that I really do love. But anyway, that's not here nor there. But what I'm trying to say is like, for, since I work out by myself, because I, I really do enjoy it, I, I'm a competitive person. And when I try working out with other people, um, unfortunately, some people are good at competition, other people are not. And I think I come on too strong for some people. So, um, I would work out in front of a mirror and that was, that has always been, cause in my head, like the person in front of you or next to you is always like your biggest competition. So I got into a habit of always saying my biggest, my biggest competitor, my biggest competition is myself. So people will be like, well, you're always looking at yourself in a mirror. And I'm like, yeah, because that's who I'm competing against. I'm competing against the person I was yesterday. So I, that's the reason why I like to work out at home because I like to see myself, um, I mean, I've cried, I've gotten angry, I laugh. Like, different emotions are released when you push your body to a certain limit. And why am I saying that? I have no idea. I think it's just about that. It's like, just go within and allow the blessings that are trying to come in, allow them to come in completely. Don't push them out because of other people. Guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys.